This guideline is about developmental coordination disorder and it is for physical therapists. It helps us have and follow recommendations to most appropriately work with families and children uh, with this disorder. Can you describe developmental coordination disorder? I mean, it presumably covers quite a lot of different things, doesn't it? It is. It's, it's, uh, it may present differently in different children, but there are four criteria that need to be met to uh, have a diagnosis of developmental coordination disorder. So it has to uh, be identified at an early age in the developmental period. Um, it has to be, uh, there have to be symptoms ruled out so that we know that it's not some other kind of condition. And children also have to have difficulties with motor coordination and then participation in a lot of activities that involve motor skills at home and at school. Now, what are some of the highlights that you'd pull out of it, the really important things that floated to the top? So some of the highlights are that we can contribute to the diagnosis by looking at uh, tests and measures across the ICF. And we can also contribute by using our skills of observational movement analysis to help guide further tests and measures that are specific to that child and that child's interest in particular activities. What I think we, we really learned was going a step further with the recommendations is that there are uh, pretty clear, there is pretty clear evidence that we need to look to task oriented training. There are a variety of types of task oriented training for these children to really focus on the, the skills and the tasks that they want to achieve. And along with that, we have to do interventions to address their body structure and function differences. And so those are things like strength and balance and coordination. And all of those things may be difficult for children with developmental coordination disorder. So the, the kind of implementations you hinted there, what, what they consist of, but are, are there some that you could briefly mention that, 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 that are very important? Yes, so uh, definitely the task-oriented trainings, there are a variety of types, uh, some of which are the co-op model, there's neurodevelopmental uh, neuromotor task training, um, and, and what's also something that we want to highlight is that we need to be good educators for parents, uh, teachers, coaches, uh, PE teachers, community volunteers about this condition so that they can hopefully implement some of the strategies that we know about, particularly the motor learning strategies that are very important with this diagnosis. So learning how to break down a task, helping the child self-assess what is what is something that I could pay possibly change to make this task easier. And if we're really good educators for parents and families, hopefully the children will be able to continue to address challenges even when they're not in our clinic or school anymore. And of course, it's all about muscle strengthening, isn't it? it it's, it's not necessarily all about muscle strengthening. Some, some children may have difficulties with strength and power. Other children may have more difficulties with coordination and balance and motor planning. And so that's where our skill as physical therapists, uh, observing their movement, watching them while we're testing, uh, can help us hypothesize about what this child's particular differences are that impact them the most. Most. So how do you counsel uh, pediatric physical therapists to implement this guideline and what, what's the approach from now, do you think? Well, what I would say is, number one, uh, when, it, when it's uh, published and available, make sure that you read over it and you're familiar with it. Uh, there is also supplemental digital content that you may want to go to with more information. And my thought is that we all need to make our best attempt at trying to follow this guideline the, the most closely that we can do great documentation so that in the future we can we can look at documentation and see is this guideline uh, really working or are there are there things that we mean wait we may need to change in the future and uh, how much benefit can good physical therapy make to children with developmental coordination disorder 
Well, what we know is that mostly uh, we're aware that short-term goals can be achieved. There's not a lot of evidence and research about the long-term impact of physical therapy, um, but with those short-term goals, children may be able to accomplish the tasks that they hope to improve upon. They may be able to make some changes in things like strength and balance and motor performance and uh, achieve their goals and have more, more uh, satisfaction uh, and, and actually parent satisfaction as well. So we know those things are achievable with physical therapy. So what for you would you say are the key takeaways for practicing clinicians around the planet? Well, I think this, this guideline is really for physical therapists, but my hope is that as a result of this, there's increased awareness about this, this diagnosis. I also hope that we can have more consistency, physical therapists can have more consistency in how we approach a child with developmental coordination disorder. And, and thirdly, I would say that I, the, a takeaway is that I really hope that we can be good educators of parents and children so that they can continue to address challenges as they, as they move through um, their lifespan.